her case is interesting because it sort of illustrates how what a difficult time Western medicine has with identifying the source of pain when there's nothing obvious that shows up on a blood test or an imaging study or whatever. The fact that she'd seen all these other doctors and undergone all these other imaging studies and just everything else, you know, kind of a million dollar workup and nothing had come up, that means just that alone means that it's likely to be a peripheral nerve problem of some sort. And then based on her description, it, it, it was pretty clear that this is very likely to be a, just an entrapment of one of these small anterior cutaneous nerves. I told her to come and see me in Las Vegas and had her set up for some diagnostic blocks. And again, she got a great result with just some local anesthetic right at the point of tenderness. The pathology in anterior cutaneous nerve entrapment syndrome is just the terminal branch of the intercostal nerve where it pierces through the anterior rectus fascia, getting scarred down or stuck in that little spot. So then when the patient is bending, twisting, or doing something like running, that nerve is being kind of stretched. So based on the, the result of her diagnostic block, it was a fairly straightforward process to just take her to the operating room make a small incision directly over the area of tenderness and then carefully dissect down and find the nerve that was the problem and then address it. When you're, when you're dealing with small nerves like this anywhere in the body, trying to decompress the nerve is sort of a fool's errand. Because of the small delicate nature of these nerves, even trying to decompress the nerve, you would run the risk of injuring the nerve. But let's say you decompressed it successfully. What's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of scar tissue that reforms all around this tiny nerve. And most likely, you know, you're going to end up with a failure because the patient's going to come back with pain. The much better approach is to find the nerve, dissect it out of the rectus sheath, so make sure it's freed up from there. And then usually these nerves are, or there's sort of some scarring or entrapment that will happen in the very superficial layer of the rectus muscle as well. So you have to follow this nerve down into the rectus muscle, making sure that it's freed up totally so there's some gliding uh, reestablished. And then you can excise the distal portion of the nerve and take the proximal end and just bury it down deep in the rectus muscle, and that's very effective. The acronym is anterior cutaneous nerve entrapment syndrome. An anterior cutaneous nerve refers to a specific anatomic structure, which is the very terminal end of the intracostal nerve as I said, that pierces from, from the rectus muscle, pierces through the anterior rectus sheath. That's your anterior cutaneous nerve. If you're coming more upstream, it's not really an anterior cutaneous nerve anymore. It's really your intercostal nerve. So for true, a patient with true acnes pathology, it's a very straightforward diagnosis um, and, a, and a real fairly simple, straightforward surgery, straightforward recovery, very easy recovery. And uh, yeah, the patients do uniformly very well. The thing about a true acne patient is they will take their finger and point right to the spot. And it's usually sort of in the mid rectus, uh, over the mid rectus somewhere. Um, and it'll be just like this one spot and they'll point to it as this is where my pain is. <clears throat> but you can get much more complicated patients who would for lack of a better term, fall into that acne's categories, but you're dealing with a much more complicated problem. Thank you.